All right, I'm going to regroup these guys up here because... Oh, I'm surprised there's no unrest. No, because that's a province I already had. There we go. So we're going to group people up and put them in Pyongyang for some rebel busting. Not here because there's a fort. We're going to leave the fort since we found out that it does reduce devastation, which is a thing. So if we look here, minus 83 from friendly forts. Does this one get double? No. So double adjacency doesn't help. Okay, and there's also a fort here, which we're going to keep up for now until the devastation goes away, and then we'll probably consider um, selling some stuff. I'm wasting legitimacy. Hit the button. I don't know what you mean. The wall, the no, the no all of legends. Wasting legitimacy, hit the button. I mean, I don't want to start the golden era. That's not legitimacy. He means the shogun buttons. Oh, yeah. So again, I want to finish this. Um, so if we don't care about this anymore, yeah, we're going to go ahead and hit the event. Do you mean the Unite Japan one? Because that's what I'm going to do now. So, uh, government changes to feudal monarchy. We'll lose our shoguns. We weren't going to be able to diplo annex another one soon anyway. But now we should be able to go and just declare war on a whole bunch of these guys. The shogun ones. Oh, that's what you mean. Oh, because I'm at 100% legitimacy. Now, I because I forgot about these shogun buttons. Thank you, yes. Now, the problem is... If I were to hit, if I were to hit this now, would that carry over when I change my government? It shouldn't, but it might. But it shouldn't. It can't possibly. Probably doesn't. Is it worth staying in this government form just to be able to hit these buttons a little bit more? No, I want to go and, like, just kick everyone's ass. This is a good test. It would cost me 20 legitimacy. I probably just will lose 20 legitimacy and get nothing. And there is a second button to form Japan. Yeah. All countries do not have the government daimyo. And do not have the government... I mean, so this presumably would be the way to form it if I just ate everyone. And that does give me a shit ton of power. One of the following is best to be true. Tributary state. Japan does not exist. Yeah, so if I hit this button, I don't get all the crazy power. So I could just wait and you and until I've a diplo annexed everyone and do it this way. So I mean would people prefer... I guess, you know what? We should do a vote. So, button number one, I become Japan now, and then I can declare war on all my daimyos. Button number two, I don't form Japan until I've annexed absolutely everyone, which will take a while, because um, I still have a lot of daimyos, and every time I annex one, everyone else hates me a little bit more. So, we could, I'm going to do a straw poll. You can, you can save your chat. Hold on. Um, Japan? Um... Form Japan now. Um, releasing all daimyos, but we can war them. Um, wait until we diplo annex the last, I'd say 12. The remaining 12 uh, will take longer. But uh, then the Form Japan button gives us a ton of Monarch points. So I can totally see agreements for both. So, um, do 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 do. Uh, vote here. Oops, actually, that's the wrong button because that would be the. Oh, no, there you go. This, that, done. Boom, boom, boom. We'll take a while before Japan gets properly formed, but. Might be better. I don't know. And I guess the advantage to doing the Diplo Annex is that we can keep hitting those buttons. Now that I've been reminded that they exist. Okay, people want to wait. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to start by hitting Sankin Kote over here for the Diplo Rep. 
because that will actually help us eliminate the penalties to our mood better. We don't really need the manpower right now, so we're going to hold off on that. That's going to be okay. Um, and my extra diplomat can probably just go and join the party of sucking up to people. Um, I might want to just check to see, just out of curiosity, is there someone I could manually pick where this would make a difference? No, they're all at 107, 200, or 180, 97 is what I meant to say. 194, 193, 190, plus 200, plus 194. Yeah, so my vassals have been sucked up to as much as is actually possible. So <clears throat> I'm going to get my extra diplomat to just like, there, more people just sucking up to random neighboring countries. At some point, we're going to want some sort of ally, possibly. Uh, you can marry some of the daimyos to get the opinion for annexing. That's true. I mean, we are married to four already. We're married to four, including the two that are the highest, I think, at 154 and 151. So I think that's actually literally true. Yeah, these two are the highest. I'm already married to them. So that's okay. So we'll just time. Time heals all wounds. And make pe people forget that, you know, we're brutal overlord. Uh, we're going to go and start converting you. That's fine. Corruption is growing because probably we're overextended. Estates, clergy and the bushi are both a little unhappy. So, have this, has this all been stated? So, yeah, okay. Um, so, why don't we go ahead and clergy this one? I mean, we could also look at places with some unrest. Um, wow, this would be a hell of a province to give away. I don't think we're going to do that. Pyongyang! Oh, you are not right. You're not territories yet, so I can't do that. Alright, right over here. This is slightly more military, so I'm going to give you to the Bushi, bring you to 11%, so that'll satisfy you. And you know what? I know there's no unrest here or anything like that, but I'm going to give this place to the clergy. Bring them to 11.6 and satisfying them. So that's good. We've got a ton of money, so we will go... So taxation, I can get up to 13. Production, I can get a 14. So let's do this production. And then let's go ahead and go temple temple. There we go. Save a little bit of cash just in case. Um, give away places that are not your religion. Oh, because you, you get a conversion bonus. Mm, yeah, maybe. No, oh, well. So these are nearly done, right? Very nearly done. Excellent. And how's our little conquistador doing? Why does he keep zooming over here? This is not where the conquistador is. There it is. He's down here. He's actually doing a pretty good job of exploring to the south. Finding a lot of the coast. When diplomat is home, but they're sending back out. We can get a another quantity idea. How are we doing? We are ahead. Okay, the next level of military tech is huge. Because units and tactics. Very, very, very. Ooh, you want 11 now. It's getting more expensive with Ming, but it's still a good investment. Although at this point, we are talking about, yeah, about minus one power point per month in tribute. So it's certainly adding up. I think the thing to do is to grab the quantity ideas here. Because... Well, it's only three years. No, never mind. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit on it. Ooh, stability. So the loyalty either way doesn't really matter. Gold is nice because we could rush more temples, but I mean hello plus three stability. Now I'm going to get a bunch more of plus stability events, because that's the way it works. Uh, these boats here, you guys should join in the Protecting Trade Fund. And the transports, I'll just go ahead and park up there. And that's going to be fine. I don't need Ming anymore, I've got all Korea. Yeah, but what about Jiangsu? Like, I could keep warring up here, is the point. Because these guys also have no allies. And they're just a tributary of Ming. Uh, lost in mind and space... We should have realized that our conquistador had no sense of orientation at all the first two times he got lost. The first time, he went to retrieve two of our pack horses and got lost for 16 days. If that had been for some grapes and, grapes and rabbits, he would have starved. He later told us he thought he was behind the expedition and sped up to catch up with it. Then he got hungry, so he went downstream to look for a trading party. The expedi blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, he's lost. We can be slowed down again, or we could just leave five prestige. Whatever, slowing them down is fine. So, what I want to do is check these guys here. Military, armies, and... 
So they can just sort to like rival or neighbors and things like that. If we take a look at these guys, they have a total of 10k troops. Yeah. So what's going to happen is I'm going to recall one of these diplomats. And what we're going to do... Oh, they would be willing to ally and stuff. That's interesting. What's this? In the week, wake of our, our culture, I think the, one, the bonus that went away, people were looking for some kind of inspiration. A man in our employment suggested we build a new temple called Jin... Kakuji, the Temple of the Silver Pavilion, as it would be covered in silver foil. A rock garden with Zen and Wabi Sabi aesthetics should be planned and added beside the temple. The simple beauty of the plans seemed to be overshadowed by the inlay of silver, and the suggestion and that suggestion was eventually removed. Go forth and build the temple. Costs us thirty bucks, gives us a free temple, or discard the plans, gain prestige. No, we'll spend thirty bucks for a temple. Hell yeah. So yeah, so we could ally with these guys. I don't see the point. Whereas we could just build a spy network and then go ready to go to war with them. And just expand our holdings more and more and more. Become more powerful. So out of curiosity, do I have a CB over here? No. I was, I'm wondering if I had a CB for the Emperor of, of China thing. I don't know how we like gain the ability to do that. We could Royal Mary China. Or sorry, Ming. Which we probably should right now, right? Just keep friendly. Or it, we could invade the south. Now, one thing that's going to be nice is when we do finally like expand to over here, although we may need to prioritize Australia. When we expand to over here, we could declare war on Brunei. We could also just go and colonize here, declare war on Brunei. If you break tributary, you gain the Emperor CB. Okay, so while I'm a tributary, I can't. Not that I would want to right now, because Ming is going to be super strong. What, are, what is Ming packing right now? Uh, 111,000 troops. So obviously that's not going to be a possibility. So I think we expect, probably for the next 100 years, to build some relationship here. We may have to build uh, break the tributary status at some point, um, but we might still be able to have a good relationship with them. So I'm going to go ahead and marry them. We're at 4-4 four, four relationship, though. Let's hold off. Let's just build our spy network over here and be ready to go after these dudes. You're still doing some rebel busting there. That's fine. Oh, the Amazons. In Hopi, there are two small tribes with a very special arrangement. The women live by themselves, far from the men, who they only allow to visit them a couple times each year. Any boy, child, fathered in this way is returned to the father, and the girls are kept by the women. If approached at any other time than is appointed, the women will defend themselves with bows and arrows. The men of the strange tribe are currently preparing for the next visit and invited the male expedition members to join them. That sounds like a bad idea. Gain 50 admin power, which sounds like a good idea. Or, this might be the only way to learn more about these strange customs. Gain 50 Diplo power. Oh! Well, normally, I do tend to prefer admin power. But right now, we actually are craving more Diplo in general. So, if we can get that extra colonist, for example, that would be quite nice. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and... Uh, let's go Let's go visit. What could possibly go wrong? So I think I'm going to move these troops here. Border these guys. They only got the 10k troops. What's their uh, military sta uh, tech? It is 8. That's the same. Aha! Kagayan is now self-sustaining. That's great. We finished turning it into a city. That's great as well. Uh, we're going to throw down a core over there. Now, we have the colonist available right now. Um, I could go and send it over here to finish this off a little quicker, but I think we'll hold off. What do we have? Reduce overextension. Improve relations with Ming is a mission. If we get them to 100, we can get 50 from marrying them. Plus one Diplo rep, really powerful. Conquer Ganji. So this will give us an instant CB against these guys. Whew. Or, I mean, we could finish the Reduce Overextension mission. Which actually won't take long at all. It gives us the plus one Diplo rep. For faster um, annexation and to make our vassals like us a little bit more. I think we're going to take this right now but we're definitely going to consider doing some some things over there what kind of forts do they have kicking around here level two level two level one um with a level two fort is it 10 cannons for the maximum bonus so we have one we have one token cannon the value cannon for the plus one to siege 
Um, but we might want to consider, um, because I think with the level two, it's like every two cannons gives you a plus one, right? So, two, four, six, eight, no, maybe not, but like maybe four? I don't remember how the, how the math works out for these, but if we went up to four cannons, I think it would give us an extra siege bonus. Hmm. I mean, we're going to be warring these guys, no matter what. I know we have the free colonists. I was still trying to decide whether I send it here, here, go here, so that we can fabricate across the way. Or if we start colonizing Australia here. I got distracted because I wanted to check the mission first to see if we had another colony mission. And we don't. So, it would be fastest to colonize adjacent. Also, Tondo is 12 development. Manila's 14. So, we get some good high-value provinces here. It'll be 1, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm thinking I'm actually going to jump over here to Palawan. Um, which should allow us to fabricate on Brunei. But still sort of be within this block. We could go Palawan, and then we could actually go and do Manila, because we'd get the adjacency bonus. Or Australia. Yeah. The sooner, Assuming we don't get colonialism spawn in our territory, then the sooner we set up a colony over here, the sooner we can get colonialism spread to us. A lot of people want me to colonize, well, Austria, they keep saying. So, I guess we'll have to do that. Are there? There is an important center of trade here, so we're going to want to prioritize that. It's got some of the highest development as well. Is it out of range? Province is too far away. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, I can do up here, I suppose. Alternatively, I could find something else that was sort of a good stepping stone. But I guess I may as well just start here. Australia has a lot of development. Well, it has had a lot of eights. And even then, it takes a while. But it, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be contiguous. I could start here and then jump down there. Spice Islands. Like, there's a lot of good candidates, right? Because all this is within range. What I could do... Here's this. What if I... If I grab this province, this could be a good stepping stone to Australia. Um, it also is development 11, which is nice. It puts me adjacent to Brunei so I can war against them. Um, I mean, they're, they're not weak, but we could probably take them. Brunei. What are you currently sitting at in terms of army size? Just to get an idea of your strength. 11,000. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my colonist here. It's going to be a little slow because it's non-adjacent and it's still tropical, but I think it's ultimately going to be fine. Are there any estate buttons I need to be pushing? No, no, no. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, it has some natives. Um, now, we still have some issues over here. You know what? Actually, hold on. Recall. I'm going to send you here just to quickly finish this. Because then we can clear up all these dudes and send them to uh, to Rebel Bust or um, Native Bust in that territory in Brunei. That's what we're going to end up doing. Okay, meanwhile, we're going to fabricate over here. We're going to try to finish that reduce over extension. We got some corruption. Age discovery 31 months away. You know what? I've got enough splendor now. I should just... I'm going to randomly hit one of these buttons. This one. There we go. Because we can still see if it carries over. It probably won't. But just for the sake of argument, I'll take a plus one bonus maybe to some warfare if I happen to be fighting in farmland. Just, just to say, because I don't know, whatever. It makes no sense. There's no... Why are we getting attrition? Because hills. Literally makes no... There's no reason whatsoever to have hit that button. But I did it anyway, because... Because things. Alright, 11. So I'm going to still pay the tribute. There's colonialism! Where did it spawn? I think we got it! What province? I think we got it. Holy shit! Woohoo! Woohoo! Wait, 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 quick, save. Just in case the game crashes all of a sudden and then we don't get it. Ha ha ha! Hacks!
Colonialism has started here. It will spread around. We get a shite ton of points. Meanwhile, now Europe should be okay because there's a good chance that um, uh, Portugal and, and, and Castile will have set up colonial nations, if not now, very, very soon. So it will spread to them anyway. They probably won't get delayed. It's actually going to hurt more everyone else in Europe. It's going to be the Englands and the Frances and the various Germanic countries because it won't start to spread to them until it hits Castile and Portugal. So likely Castile and Portugal will be able to get it before they have to spend extra power points. But the rest of Europe... Oh, oh baby! Oh, this is great news! Oh, shit. And no squirrels needed? Send us to Aruba? Oh, oh, is it like squirrels crashed my computer? Is that is that the idea? Yeah. Now, we're not playing Iron Man. So, you know... It's too bad, because it's like, you want this to happen in Iron Man. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to finish this colony real quick here. And then we're going to go and do the Brunei thing. That's going to be okay. What I'm going to do is grab these transports and just park them over here. Bam. Excellent stuff. Uh, do I want to hit any light bulbs? Mm, no, no, no. Because we really want to get this military tech. We don't want to be late on that. That's going to be too key two key. Do we want to build another building right now? I think that's probably okay. I think we're getting more from the taxation buildings. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get that going. There we go. Let's say I clicked. So we still have some money over there to deal with uh, random expenses that might come up. Um, we are building our spy network over here, which is fine. And I think it's okay that, you know, we just wait for the extension, overextension to go away before we start the war, because we'll get a new mission and it might be really helpful. Can you explain what Colosium can colonialism means. So colonialism is one of the estates. The estate system was added in, I guess, the last big expansion, right? Um, and this is the way sort of tech advances throughout the world. The big thing is that when one of these institutions spawns, from that point forward, every country where they haven't embraced it, and technically we have not embraced it. it one of our provinces has, but as a nation we haven't. Every year that as a nation you haven't embraced uh, an institution, you get a 1% increase to all your tech costs. And that is really really powerful. Did I say it's institutions, not estates? Institutions. Institutions. So these institutions appear in a province. Um, most, a lot of our countries will start with feudalism. I think that probably just the, um, the natives in the new world don't start with feudalism. Don't quote me on that though. Um, and that's it. Renaissance always spawns somewhere in Italy, I believe. Um, can we get that as part of a tooltip anymore? No, because it already spawned. I believe Renaissance always spawns somewhere in Italy. Um, colonialism can spawn anywhere who has like found the new world and so on and so forth. Printing press, I believe, will always spawn in Germany. Yeah, North or South Germany. Um, and so on and so forth. So this is how trade, how tech advances. And when you embrace it, you also get various bonuses. So the, when you finally embrace colonialism, you'll get 10% more provincial trade power, which is nice. But the big and important thing is you got to embrace it not to get increasing tech costs. So it's spawned here. So if we take a look, we've got colonialism is present. It's not embraced by a country, but it's present here. And it will spread to neighboring provinces. There you go. It'll spread across country borders as well, as long as you've got... Um, positive relationships. We found another most deadly lake. Our colony is self-sustaining. Excellent. So now we're going to do the thing where we're going to send a colonist to probably Banjar. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, this one here is worth 13. Um, This one's closer to Australia. Now, even this might be closer to Australia, but we're going to do it this way. Nonetheless, it is because uh, we, we really don't have to rush to get a colonial nation anymore. That's true. I don't actually care when we colonize Australia anymore. Because that was the backup if the institution didn't spawn in our territory. I think it's still okay to grab this. Good and valuable. And then maybe we can knock up Brunei early. And wouldn't that be lovely? Valuable territory over there. We are going to make you a proper core. Um, are you a state? You are a state. How are we doing in terms of... Okay, we don't have enough Filipino people to... Oh, we have a limit of two promoted cultures. Okay, so if we tech up, we could get some more. At some point, we'll probably have to, because I think we'll have enough Filipinos to make it worthwhile. All right, you're idle, but not for much longer. You're going to go and suck up to more of our vassals over here. Now, we could do some sort of, like, subsidizing thing to accelerate this. The thing is, there's not really an advantage to accelerating this, because no matter how soon we do this one, it's still going to give a minus 30 to everyone else, so then you're stuck just waiting for that. It's only when you get down to the last two or three that subsidies and gifts might actually accelerate things in a meaningful fashion. 
conquer all the spice islands and make big bank off selling the spices to Europeans. Like, hey, Europeans, you like actual flavor in your food? Well, I've got something for you.